Seismicity in Oklahoma is really nothing new. The reason Oklahoma is such a major oil and gas producing state is because of its geology. Many of the oil and gas formations that produce oil and gas are what we call structural traps. Structural traps are created by faults. We have a lot of faults in Oklahoma. There are thousands of faults in Oklahoma, and faults are what generate seismicity. Uh, so Oklahoma has had a history of seismicity uh, going back as far as records were kept. So we're looking at something that is unprecedented and requires a significant scientific study to understand what's going on. Clearly, the oil and gas industry is a very important part of Oklahoma's economy. And so understanding how to avoid triggered and induced seismicity um, and still be able to have that be a significant portion of our economy is important, um, both for Oklahoma's economy, but also for the energy independence of the United States. Oklahoma has seen a dramatic increase in the, in the amount of seismicity in our state, uh, and everyone is concerned. We are concerned as the regulatory body uh, to make sure we're doing everything we can to minimize the risk between any uh, oil and gas activity and any seismicity. Industry is concerned as well. They are providing data to the geological survey who is uh, interpreting that data and building better maps, creating better maps, which helps us better understand where these areas of high risk might be. Oklahoma actually has a very large seismic network. The first seismometer in Oklahoma um, came in 1961, and currently we have over 20 um, permanent and about 15 temporary. And we estimate things like where the earthquake occurred, how deep it was, uh, what time it occurred and what the magnitude was. We have uh, contributed to the Oklahoma Geological Survey's uh, seismic monitoring program uh, so they can put more monitoring stations out. Industry has helped assist in that program as well. All of this is to collect data for Oklahoma to get a better understanding of what's going on as far as seismicity goes. These activities have been going on for decades and so one of the, the key questions is why now? One of the the things we can use to answer this is bringing everybody to the table. As far as industry goes, currently they're helping us with our with the statewide fault database system, and so they're giving us their proprietary information to help the state as a whole understand the faults. The oil and gas industry, they are looking for much more precise information. So what they do is they generate very high frequency uh, seismic waves, often with trucks that go along the ground and thump the ground and create very specific types of waves uh, with the frequencies they want to look at. And that they can use that then to image where faults occur and where rock types change and that sort of thing. We're trying to figure out if there's some kind of correlation of what they call induced seismicity where the seismicity isn't induced by artificial means. Well, as far as induced and natural seismicity goes, from a seismic standpoint, where you're actually looking at the data and locating these earthquakes, there is no difference. We don't have some silver bullet to instantly identify a triggered earthquake versus a naturally occurring earthquake because they're both the exact same physics occurring on the Earth. It's one body of rock sliding past another on a fault and generating seismic waves. Physically, they're the same process. And so it, it's a bit of a challenge to try and distinguish one from another. We are looking at everything we possibly can to see if there's any correlation between the new oil and gas activity that's going on today and the uh, uptick in the increase of seismicity that we're seeing today. We had thousands of wells in this state, close to 10,000 uh, wells that were injecting water underground, and we had no seismicity going on at all. What we're trying to understand is uh, what's changed. We are going through our records looking for wells that have tapped into the basement rock, knowing that uh, all seismologists agree that's your highest risk scenario for generating any induced seismicity. Uh, and industry understands that risk and uh, they are voluntarily shutting their wells in and plugging these wells back just to ensure that their well is not considered contributing to any type of risk of induced seismicity. We have a lot of incredible technical people between the oil and gas industry, between regulators, and between researchers. Bring everybody to the table and work on this together. And I 
am confident that we'll find the answers we need. Uh, operators in Oklahoma, they live here. I mean, they're Okies. They're equally concerned about any relationship between oil and gas activity and seismicity. Their kids live here, their grandkids live here. Their, uh, their future is here. <laughs>